Roslyn, British Columbia, an old gold mining camp turned popular ski resort today. Roslyn has a long history full of get rich quick intrigue and tales of the local mine workers' struggles for rights and social justice. Part of that history is hidden in the historic Roslyn Miners Union Hall, where persistent rumors suggest that Joe Hill, the famous wobbly protest singer, spoke and sang. Built in 1898, it provided support for striking local miners in 1901 and became a meeting place for union activists as well as a venue for union events and activities. Hill was often seen on the picket lines of his union, the industrial workers of the world. Sometime in 1911 or 1912, he picketed with striking wobblies in the Fraser Canyon. There he penned his song, Where the Fraser River Flows. There is a local belief that he could have wandered farther east to Rosalind, seeking a hideout from the pursuing authorities who were never far behind the radical singer-songwriter. What I do know is that when I first came to Rosalind, there were old-timers who had been children who were of, of union families who said their fathers had, had seen him here, seen him play at meetings, at union meetings in the Miners Hall, and and that the Pinkertons did come after him here, and that they had helped hide him in secret rooms. You know, there's talk that uh, he was here and was a speaker in a, on a couple of different occasions. I don't know what those events would have been, but um, also the, the, the rumor that later on, uh, when he was sought after by authorities of a whole pile of different natures, uh, he, uh, he hid out, and there he, or he was hidden out in the Raza Miners Hall and, and didn't leave there for all, you know, the period of time that he was here. It wasn't seen in town, but the, the rumor was that he was here. It would have been the first time a Wobbly came to town. Big Bill Haywood, arguably the most famous Wobbly leader of all, mentions Rosalind in his memoirs. A few years after Hill supposedly came to Rosalind, Ginger Goodwin, the leader of the 1917 smelter strike in nearby Trail, spoke at the historic hall. Do local citizens share a belief that Hill was actually here? Does the old hall provide them with a continuing sense of Rosalind's special place in history? Well, I think it had a big influence. I think his his uh, his presence was an influence no matter where he was. And, and uh, the fact that in this area here, there were a lot of things going on at the time, uh, especially with union activism and, and uh communism and all kinds of things that were happening through the union movement. Um, that, that was something that I think has had a, a real influence as, as it's gone on in history. Whether it's a legend or the fact, the reality is that Joe Hill and the, and the, and the union people here were undergoing the same kind of persecution and they were right fighting for the same causes which made them natural allies. And it seems to me really probable that he would have come to offer them to sport and that they would have regarded him as a hero. Joe Hill was a musician. In fact, it was one of the most telling pieces of evidence against him was that uh, because song and music is so powerful and before there was Twitter, and before there was Facebook, there were meetings where people actually talked to each other and there were songs that reminded people and transmitted memories, and that was very dangerous. In fact, the, um, the police chief of um, San Diego sent a note to the Salt Lake City police chief when Joe was arrested, and he said, you have certainly got the right man. He is definitely an undesirable citizen. He is somewhat of a musician and a writer of songs for the IWW. <laughs> And, you know, that was, that was the telling thing about why they were so nervous of Joe Hill. He could pull people together and he could do it with song and then they would remember. Today, the Roslyn Miners Union Hall is not so much a union hall anymore, uh, though its legacy as such is intact. It now serves as a community and cultural center. An annual film festival is held here, among other activities. 
Just walking around this hall and looking at what the miners said they wanted built and what they paid to have built with their own money, the bosses didn't build this, the government didn't build it, the miners paid out for it out of their own pockets, and they built a hall that is not just an enclosed space to hold meetings. It's a thing that when you walk in, it says, this thing has dignity. It's got presence. It's got continuity. Uh, it's got quality. It's intended as a heritage. And they didn't build it for the few miners who were going to be here for a few years. This, this building was built to stand as part of the community. There wasn't any solid historical evidence that proved Joe Hill was ever in Roslyn. No graffiti scratched on a back wall reading J.H. was here. No ghost hiding in the rafters of the fourth floor attic. Still, what does remain is the rumor of his visit. A kind of rural urban legend, perhaps, and a fighting spirit that can still inspire young and old alike to stand up for what they believe is right and just. In fact, the legend of Joe Hill's secret Canadian hideout still resonates at the Joe Hill Coffee House once a month, when some of his songs can still be heard bouncing off the big ceiling beams of the Roslyn Miners Union Hall. I dreamed I saw Joe 